Time in range? Or time in tight range. I just debated a guy on this hot topic and I kicked his ass. This story and more coming up right now. It's TCOID Newsy News with your hosts, Dr. Steve Edelman and Dr. Jeremy Pettis. Welcome to Newsy News. I'm Dr. Steve Edelman. And I'm Dr. Jeremy Pettis. In the world of obesity and weight loss, Novo Nordisk, the makers of Ozempic and Wegovy, just released data on a clinical trial where they tested the current highest dose of Wegovy available, 2.4 milligrams weekly, versus a dramatically increased dose of 7.2 milligrams weekly. Top-line results stated the high dose resulted in over 20% weight loss. Now, this result is raising eyebrows and the question of just how far can we push the dose of these medications? To answer this question, companies are now exploring higher and higher doses of GLP-1 meds. And we here at Newsy News were fortunate enough to get our hands on one of the easy to use preloaded pens for weekly injection. And Eric, I um, understand we have one to show our audience. Yep, hold on one second. Holy sh are you for real with this thing? This thing's ridiculous. Cut to Steve, cut to Steve. That's right. With this simple injection once per week, scientists are proposing that weight loss could be up to 100%. 100%, doesn't that mean people would simply disappear? That's right. This news has rightfully outraged the magician community who for centuries have held the monopoly on making people disappear. We reached out to magic legend Teller of Penn and Teller for comment. And here's what he had to say. Compelling. In the world of continuous glucose monitors, we have two exciting and almost simultaneous announcements. First, Dexcom was recently approved to extend their sensor life from 10 and a half to 15 and a half days. And next, Medtronic received FDA approval for their new Simplera sensor, which is a major update from their previous sensor. No more transmitter, no need to charge it, and no need for calibration. Wow, Steve, that's actually amazing. I mean, with changing your sensor less often or not having to calibrate or charge it, I mean, people with diabetes could save a ton of time. Hold on, let me see how much time this could add up to every year. All right, so one less sensor every five days divided by the number of changes in the rotation of the Earth and take that square root of the I don't want to deal with this crap anymore. And the answer is I still wish I didn't have diabetes. Jeremy, stop being so dramatic. You have to admit, these are two really great updates for people with diabetes. I stand by my calculations. So dramatic. Speaking of CGM updates, there is a current debate as to whether time and range is still the best outcome to report for people using these devices. We have used time and range defined as a blood sugar between 70 and 180 milligrams per deciliter for some time now. Data shows that keeping your blood sugars in this range more than 70% of the time is associated with a lower risk of long-term complications. However, some are now advocating that we move to a time in tight range goal of 70 to 140. This is a hot topic in the diabetes world. And in fact, Jeremy just participated in a debate at a recent major diabetes technology conference in Amsterdam. He argued to stick with the traditional time and range while the opposing side argued for moving to time in tight range. So Jeremy, how did that go? Well, thanks for asking, Steve. I mean. I think it actually went really well. I laid out clear evidence for how advocating for time in tight range would not improve outcomes, would increase the risk of hypoglycemia, and decrease patients' quality of life. I mean, you know how much we struggle to stay in range, and now all of a sudden 70 to 180 is out, and it's 70 to 140. I mean, frankly, it's ridiculous, but I think I laid out the argument really well. You certainly did, and you literally stunned the opposing side speechless. In fact, we have a clip of their reaction. Eric, roll the clip. We have no response. That was perfect. That's how you debate. Moving on. Recent data suggests that up to 75% of people living with diabetes experience diabetes know-it-allism. 
The CDC defines diabetes know-it-allism as a situation when somebody that knows little to nothing about diabetes impresses their misguided beliefs on you in an infuriating fashion. Here to comment on this issue is our very first Newsy News guest, Guy to Barbecue you just met who found out you have diabetes. What's going on, Jeremy? Thanks for having me. This barbecue's kind of mid, though. Mid? Oh, you mean lame. I get it. But, you know... Oh crap, man! That barbecue sauce really made my blood sugars go through oh the roof. My I gotta hold, hold the phone. Now. Like, don't tell me that you've bought into all this diabetes stuff too. What do you mean, bought in? I mean, that that barbecue sauce did make my blood sugars go See, high. See, there you go. High blood sugar, hypoglycemia. I bet they're pushing those drugs on you too. What drugs? Do you mean insulin? Dang right, I do. That's the worst one. I had a grandma. She started taking insulin. Six hours later, dead. Gosh, well, well, how old was she? One hundred and two. Okay, well then maybe it wasn't the answer. Look, I don't want to get bogged down semantics with you, Pettis, but you know about Big Pharma, right? They're just keeping you hooked on the stuff as long as they can. You know what they say? Why tell you about the cow when they can sell you the goat milk for a crap ton of money? Okay, I'm pretty sure you're not using that phrase. Pretty sure I am, Pettis, but me, I just stick to the proven medications. Okay, well now I really hate to ask, but what are the proven medications? I'm glad you asked. I actually brought my list here. So I take a crap ton of zinc, Mm -hmm. a fiber energy, drink every three hours because, you know, I'd be wearing off. Melatonin, B vitamins, all the Bs, like 1 through 36. Ginkgo biloba, got to have my ginks. Triple activated charcoal, unfiltered creek water, ice cold yoga bath. Okay, stop. You got to know this stuff isn't proven, right? I mean, these things don't have to regulate their claims. They can say anything. Oh, is that right, doctor? Well, what would you say if I told you I didn't even have this beard yesterday? I'd say that's ridiculous. I mean, even if you did take something that could stimulate hair growth, it would take a long time. Okay, what are you doing now? Just hacking into your pump. You can't just hack into somebody's pump. That's exactly what they want you to think, right? But listen, instead of uh, your pump giving you insulin, now it's giving you estrogen. Estrogen? Give me a break. I mean, there's no way you possibly could have. Don't come crying to me in a couple weeks when you got big old... Okay, that's enough. Guy, you just met at a barbecue that found out you have diabetes, everybody. Sheesh, get out of here. For TCOID Newsy News, I'm Dr. Steve Edelman. And I'm Dr. Jeremy Pettis. Thank you for watching. You gotta get your ginks. Oh, man, we really gotta vet our guests better.